Greetings. My name is Christine Mai. I'm a pediatric anesthesiologist at Massachusetts General Hospital. In this video, you will hear a story about the development of pediatric fluid resuscitation by Dr. Frederick Berry. Dr. Berry is a professor emeritus in pediatrics and anesthesiology at the University of Virginia. In over five decades, he was well known for his works on patient safety and advocacy, in particular, his works on pediatric fluid management. I got off to the Navy in Taipei, Taiwan, as part of the regular uh, program that we had after you finished residency, and spent two years as a pediatrician. I had a lot of kids had gastroenteritis, and we had no way of measuring electrolytes. They did have uh, some equipment, but it was not complete. There was a naval research unit there that was studying cholera. And although we had no cholera, I did uh, talk to one of the pediatricians who was assigned there, and I asked him how they treated these children who had severe vomiting and gastroenteritis, and they were using uh, what would be considered a balanced salt solution at that time. Well, I had two or three babies who had severe uh, nausea and vomiting, and uh, one of them was semi-conscious when it came in. And uh, I gave it balanced salt solution. I was afraid to let the IV go when I first got it in and got a blood return. I told the nurse to hang the bottle as high as she could, and we just ran in about 250 or 300 cc's of fluid. And I wasn't going to let go of the child's foot until I saw an improvement in circulation. And within about 40 minutes, as it ran in, I could see the child get better. And within six hours, the child was up, standing up in bed. Wow. Yeah. So that that really impressed me about the fact that the need for fluid and electrolyte pumps. I didn't understand quite how important that was going to get to be, but it was important at least at that time. During residency um, in pediatrics, I knew that uh, they were ne they never used bond salt solution. It was always a very dilute solution because the word was that the child's kidney could not handle the sodium, and therefore we would overload them, put them in pulmonary edema. Well, I can say that my entire career, I never saw any child get pulmonary edema from the fluids we gave, although that was the initial concern. At that time, what type of solutions did they use initially? Well, they were a quarter normal or a third normal, and in a rare instance, it would be D5 and half normal. But that was uh, very, very rare. And this was for intraoperative and postoperative yes. fluids? Yes. And then maintenance afterwards on the floor? And then maintenance would go back to quarter. Okay, and afterwards, what type of problems or issues did you have? Well, the, the one that got my attention the most was about a year into my anesthesia residency, I'd done a child for a tonsillectomy and everything going fine. And I came back in the recovery room and the nurse said, oh, uh, did the parents say anything about him being sick ahead of time because he had bad uh, gastroenteritis? And she, being a good nurse, said, well, he, he certainly has lost a lot of fluid and she had turned up his fluids to try to replace what he lost. And I said, well, that, that sounds like a pretty good idea. And then about an hour later, after another bolus of fluid, uh, the child had a seizure. And I thought, well, we have caused a problem here. And so we got electrolytes quickly and the sodium was about 118. And so it was obvious the child had iatrogenic uh, hyponatremia. And, I, and throughout my career thereafter, I found a lot of these types of patients. And that's what drove me to using balanced salt solution. Now, what's interesting is we were using balanced salt solution for adult patients. That had been uh, the people that had Parkland, Pepper Jenkins in that group and certainly introduced balanced salt solution, so all the adult patients got it. And it seemed to me to be a very simple maneuver to give it to all children, including neonates. And lo and behold, um, we never had another hyponatremia after that. Through his lectures throughout America and worldwide, in over five continents, Dr. Berry was able to influence the practices of pediatricians, 
anesthesiologists and surgeons on switching to balanced salt solutions in order to prevent iatrogenic hyponatremia. More than publishing it in the journals, uh, it got by way of mouth, and I was doing a lot of medical uh, anesthesia societies where I'd go and talk about the fluids. I started with our own, and then uh, in the early 1970s, I was doing ASA refresher courses. And then I did some book chapters in George Gregory's book on fluids. And then I did my own book in the uh, later 1970s.